from watching the previous video, hopefully you've organized your source clips into the folders you want within the media library. Let's take a look at the next step in the typical editorial workflow, which is working with source clips in the source viewer. You just have to select a clip in the media library and it will automatically be loaded into the source viewer. Let's quickly run through navigation. You can play a clip by pressing the play button or by pressing spacebar. Alternatively, you can use the familiar J, K and L keyboard shortcuts to jog the clip forwards and backwards. To advance forward or backward one frame at a time, you can click the frame forward or frame backward buttons. To go to the beginning or end of a clip, you can click the previous transition or next transition buttons in the navigation controls. And finally, to scrub a clip, just grab the scrub bar and drag it to the right or left with the cursor. To mark a clip for the edit, you will find the mark in and mark out functionality located beneath the navigation controls. You can scroll to a frame and click the in button. And then scroll to another frame and press the out button. Alternatively, if you know the exact timecode, you can click on the timecode display, type the timecode into the calculator and press enter to confirm. You will see the duration update in the timecode indicator with the timing between the in and out points. One extra tip, if you adjust the duration value by clicking and dragging on it, this will adjust the out point. To navigate to the in or out point, you can click on the go to mark in or go to mark out. To remove your mark in and mark out, you can click on this pull down menu and choose the relevant options to remove the in mark, out mark or both. Now I just want to sidetrack slightly and show you another way in which you can view your source media. When you load a clip into the source viewer, you will see in the timeline area that there is a tab with a green highlight. When you click on this tab, it will display your source as a sequence. What's the point of this? Well, it allows you to see how many tracks are in the source, the in and out markers, and you move around it like you would a regular sequence. In different cases, you could add effects to the source before editing it into the sequence. Another useful editorial function when working with clips is adding markers to the source to pinpoint the areas that you would like to remember. To quickly add a marker to the current frame you're looking at in the source viewer, simply click the mark button. This adds a marker to that particular frame and it is visible through the scrub bar. To go to a specific marker, click the pull down menu and choose go to marker and then you can choose the marker you wish to navigate to. To delete a marker, you must first be on the same frame and in the pull down menu, you can select clear marker. Now coming back to the source tab and the source clip sequence, you saw how the marker appeared. I'll add another marker to the source clip and in the sequence, you can right click on the marker and edit it. You can add a comment to the marker, as well as change the color if you choose. You can have as many markers as you like in a source clip, and each can have its own comment for logging purposes. Once you are done, don't forget to switch back to the record tab with the red highlight so that you can see the sequences you are editing into. As a last tip for working with the source viewer, there are a lot of auxiliary functions that you may not use all the time, but they are accessible through the navigation controls. For example, clicking and holding down the play button reveals the different modes you can choose for playing a clip. The same applies for the go to buttons located at both ends of the navigation controls. In the next video, you'll learn how to create a sequence and prepare tracks for editing.